We're back for our final two games before the Winter World Cup here with Brighton. But will we go into it in a race for the top four or dragging our heels down in mid-table? Let's go and find out. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 13 of Building Brighton with me, Daniel. Let's hope it's not unlucky as we go to league leaders Liverpool and mid-table Southampton into away Premier League clashes. And it's where we've had most of our troubles this year. We've had a friendlier start on paper at home, but now the real tests are coming. Two away games in succession to go into the World Cup and a horrible fixture schedule in January. Are we still going to be competing after that? We currently sit in fifth, just one point behind United and one ahead of Arsenal. But of course, that can change very quickly. So if you're looking forward to finding out how we get on, then please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe for daily content from FM22. We'll be playing this one till the end of the season and have a new top three on Sunday as well. But then it's all about the FM23 beta. It shouldn't be far away. If you want to see our plans, they're up in the eye above, as well as some of my save idea videos. And come and follow us on Twitch, where we'll have daily live streams from the new game. You can also find links to other platforms and ways to support the channel down in the description below. But let's go straight into this by having a look at what's been happening off camera. Because since you were last with me, I think it's fair to say there's been a little frustration. But overall, we can't complain at where we are. So let's have a look at the results since you were here. You were with me for back-to-back -back defeats against Arsenal and Rangers. And it did drag on to the following weekend. A one-all draw at home to a Leicester side that are incredibly strong in this save. And to be fair, we were quite fortunate to get that. Our main man, Karim Adeyemi, saved us late on again. We were fortunate to nick a point. Pats and Daka causing all sorts of trouble for us. However, we did then get a brilliant win in Naples against Napoli. We'd rotated the side as well, but I don't know what it was with Napoli. We saw it in a home game. They offered next to nothing. I've got every European league loaded, so they should be brilliant. It just didn't work out that way. Tarkovsky and Taylor Richards getting the goals there. We then won 2-0 away at Fulham, ending our away problems on the road of recent weeks. Karim Adeyemi and Alexis McAllister, the two stars, back to the party. And then a 4-0 win at home to Dnipro. I played it off camera because we were already through. We had 10 points, Rangers had 10 points, Napoli were down on 6. So Dnipro, we beat comfortably, Taylor Richards got 2, Adam Hlozek got 1, and Solly March picked up 1 and a knock as well. That leads us into these two games. And to be fair, when we come back from the World Cup, we play one of the promoted sides at home. So perhaps we shouldn't be complaining quite so much. I'm more worried about the spell in January, where it's Liverpool away in the Cup, City and Chelsea at home, and then West Ham away as well. That's where we're going to start to learn a lot. But let's see how we get on as we head to Anfield for a big Premier League match. Three days after the European game, but to be fair... We didn't really have to play our first team, it was a dead rubber. So it does give us the opportunity to go back to our well-rested first team. Just to show you as well, for Europe, we did uh, win the group, which means that we're not going to be until the last 16 now. Little extra games rest isn't going to harm us at all. So Liverpool is going to be the side we're playing in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal. Now let's see, the pre-rehearsal here. The champions in waiting as it stands, how are they going to do against us? They've got an incredible side, they're really strong. So let's pick our best 11 and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. To be honest, if he'd been fit, I probably would have played Kelvin today at right wing back. But he's just coming back from an injury layoff and he's not had any minutes at all. So we're going to be a bit more patient with him. The rest of the sides, I'm sure it's what you'd expect. We've got Lavakovic in goal. Veltman, Dunk and Webster at the back three. Lamptey and Kukurea are the wing backs with Basuma and Berger in centre midfield. And then a front three of McAllister, Trossard and Adiemi. A sure to cause Liverpool a threat on the counter. Can we create enough chances to get a result? Only one way to find out. Off to Anfield we go. Well, we got a sneak preview of some of the Liverpool signings back in the Community Shield, and they seem to be there again. Paolo Dybala, Frank Kessie, so much quality across the side. I mean, the bench is stunning. Henderson's there, Diaz is there, Matip's there, Gomez, Naby Keita. It's a quality side. So let's just go and get through it, see how we get on. Looks like they rested Salah and Alexander-Arnold in midweek. So I think they might be all right, mightn't they? Let's get through the dressing room. Let's see how the lads get on. Fingers crossed we can put on a worthy display. Well, we're back very early on with Tariq Lamptey on the right. Playing a 1-2 with Veltman and into Basuma. The through ball's just intercepted though. And Fabinho goes away to Dybala. 
I would expect Liverpool to be pretty ruthless on the counter if we're not careful. Mane has turned Lamptey inside out and found Kessie. And Fabinho gets it wide to Robertson. Down the left he goes. To the byline. Into Mane. It's so, so easy. Lavakovic doesn't save it. I don't know what they're checking. If they're appealing for offside, not a chance in hell. Robertson was on by a million miles. I'm pretty sure of it. The goal's awarded. Shouldn't have even been checked that. And with half an hour gone, we have not laid a glove on Liverpool. We've managed to defend that corner as it's back to Virgil van Dijk. And if he puts one in the top corner from 25 yards, then we might as well give up. We're not laying a glove on them. We're not really having a threat. And we know with Addy Amy, all you need to do is create chances. If you don't do that, you can't expect a result as we give it away in our own half again. Salah gets it to Alexander-Arnold. We want to not really allow him too much time coming forward. We know where he's got his quality. As Adi Amy holds up here for Basuma. Wide to Kukurea. There's two men inside of him. One's Trossard. Adi Amy's up with them, but he goes wide to Kukurea again. Gets the cross in. There is Adi Amy. Stunning stay from Alison Becker. Absolutely wonderful goalkeeping. And he's tipped behind for a corner kick. We've got the warning to close down. Trent will do that. So the corner's into the back post. Trossard gets there. Goes as far as Lewis Dunk. His ball in is absolutely awful. A defender's pass, you might call it. As Lamptey gives it to Veltman. Basuma to McAllister. Through to Adi Amy. He's one on one. Oh, he's hit the post. Adi Amy has missed two chances in a row. That does not happen very often. Albeit the first was a stunning save. The second was the width of a post away. Those narrow margins are the difference between a defeat and a victory. As Trossard challenged to Basuma. But I tell you what, we're starting to play really well the last five minutes. Basuma gives it back to Sander Berger, who's really improving off the pitch. All the way back to the keeper this time. A little bit frustrating. He gives it to Webster. Inside to Dunk. This has been a lovely move. Lots of passes. Lots of composure. But it's got to lead to something. Veltman gets it wide and he's giving it away. Lamptey waiting for the ball. Robertson plays it through to Mane. And this will be two. Berger intercepts. Excellent work from the midfielder. But only as far as Trent Alexander-Arnold. To Fabinho. Into Salah. Through ball to Kessie. That is glorious. Great save, Lavakovic. Brilliant all round. Brilliant through ball. Wonderful effort. And great save. Corner kick. Dybala will take. Into the back post. Or front post, in fact. Sander Berger heads away. Had plenty of float on it, but didn't go very far. On the way to half time, we've only had one shot on target. But it was a glorious chance. Though, we can't keep giving the ball away like this. It's been a great game. But the amount of times we've conceded possession in the middle third... It's frightening. Kukurea nicks it this time. Plays it through to Adi Amy. Third time lucky, is it? No. Oh, he's gone wide again. Karim Adi Amy, what has happened to you, son? Three chances, no goals. I've never seen the likes. Half time, 1 0 Liverpool. Please don't let that be the start of a goal drought. I'm going to tell the lads to keep it up. It's been a better last 15 minutes, but Liverpool have still got a massive threat. So let's see how we go in the second half. As we get to the hour mark, despite being dominated on the stats, we actually had the higher expected goals until that point. That shows how good the Adi Amy chances were. As Dybala puts a corner kick in, on the line to Jones, it somehow stays out. Pinball in the six-yard box. And with 20-odd minutes left, I'm going to make changes. Let's see who we can bring on. I think Kelvin is going to make his comeback from injury. Lamptey will be replaced there. Basuma or Berger will come off too. And then Trossard for Zakarian. Do I change the striker? It's a very bold move, but he's very frustrated. Lozek's going to come on. Chance to be a hero. Adi Amy missing three chances is a bad omen. Let's see what the replacement does. He's a wonder kid too, don't forget. And here we are, just over 10 to go, playing out from the back with Lewis Dunk. Back to Lavakovic, who just hoofs downfield. That's aimless. Not really the ideal play. And to be fair, Liverpool's press has stopped us there. Though Zakaria nicks it off Fabinho. Oh, that's dirty. It's desperate. And he's going to get a red card. Has to be a second yellow. Well done, referee. He didn't bottle it. But Zakarian was in there. I'd rather have had the chance. 10 to go. We're against 10. Alexander-Arnold comes down the right. I've gone back to positive. We normally sit up balanced away from home against these top sides. As Salah, you're not giving a penalty for that. You're surely not. I mean, I know he's got a reputation for going down easy. But that's ridiculous. The game, ah, oh, he's tried to even it up. The referee, as soon as he gives the red card, has to even it up in Liverpool's favour. But Lavakovic saves it. We're still in the game. Robertson blazes the rebound over. Eight to go. We've got a chance. 
though it's a Liverpool free kick, they're dominating the game again. Maybe we just can't go positive, even against 10 men. Crossing from the left from Dybala to Matip, header save to Mane. Brilliant goalkeeping, but the second one's in. And Henderson the sub scores. How are we worse with 10? And to be fair, the referee has given them everything since the red card. We're back at the other end though, albeit with Liverpool in possession. Alexander-Arnold to Matip in his own box and back to Alisson. Why to Robertson? This could get a little bit ugly here because Liverpool have now gone counter-attacking and it probably suits their players more than their normal game plan. As Alexander-Arnold down the right to Henderson, through to Salah, must have been offside. Back to Mane who scores. I mean, it looked off to me, but nothing's given. They're not even checking. We had the one checked in the first half that was five yards on. That one looked close, nothing doing. How on earth this has happened against 10, I don't know. Fabinho getting sent off, the worst thing that happened all day. Expected result against Liverpool, albeit a disappointing finish. But let's get to Southampton, because that's the one we really want to result. Well, lots of fitness tests as we head into our final game before the six-week break for the Winter World Cup. Solly March does not make it. The rest of them there look like they have. But Southampton away is an interesting game. A mid-table side, a side we'd like to get a result against. I think they were our first game, were they not? Was it not a nil-nil draw at Southampton that started our career? How different things are now with Karim Adeyemi. Let's see how we get on, what team we've got available. We've battered Crawley in the Papa John's Trophy and a lot of the youngsters got a game in that one. So we'll be back in a minute to run through our 11. That heads to St Mary's for the final game before the break. Well, I'm left very frustrated because not for the first time this season, Basuma has gone on international duty just in the middle of the Premier League year. We've also got a few injury knocks and a few players not quite fit. So what it means is this is the strongest 11 we can put out. And I have made a couple of choices in here as well, to be fair. I'm leaving in Lamptey for Kelvin today just because Kelvin built his fitness in that EFL trophy match. It means the same back three, the same keeper and the same wing backs. However, Jacob Murder is in alongside Berger because of the international duty for Basuma. And Zakarian, I've bought in for Trossard. Look, he's played better whenever he's been in the team. So it seems silly not to give him a go. I know he's young. I know he's inexperienced. But hopefully he can give us some attacking edge. I'm not sure which way round the two of them are better. I guess given Zakarian's vision, maybe we should swap them round. We'll do that for now. See how they get on. But we can always switch it back if need be. Five changes for Ralph Haas and Hootel's side who freshen up their team. But look who's in the middle. The deadline day sale, Stephen Alzate is playing for Southampton in the starting 11. Looks like he's playing in the centre of midfield as well. I'll be interested to see how that goes. We've got a strong side. We've not made too many changes. So let's just see how we get on. Fingers crossed it can be a positive outcome. Because I want to go into the World Cup in style. And I want to go there in European places. If we can qualify this year through the league, that would be a remarkable achievement. Well, we're trying to be a bit more positive from the start here, but we're dealing with a Salasu long throw. Dunk gets it off the line. It's all over the place back there. Lavakovic came and got nowhere near it. To be fair, the long throw's not often worked in this year's FM, so it's a pretty good effort to make something from it as they come down the right-hand side here with Livramento. The youngster gets it into Stuart Armstrong. Alzate's with them, but it's given away to Sakarian, and he releases McAllister. Through ball towards Kukurea was the wrong pass. Adi Amy was gone through the middle and no one was following him. Though Murders nicked it from the clearance. Adi Amy finds McAllister. His shot's just wide of the post. Nil-nil. Both sides look shaky at the back. Let's see how this one pans out. As we're back with 16 minutes on the clock with the ball in a very attacking area. And it's an easy goal. That was the simplest goal you'll ever see. Zakarian and Adi Amy play a 1-2 on the right wing. Passed across the box to McAllister. And he taps in past the keeper who'd committed too far to the near post. I wouldn't mind every goal going in like that. First shot on target, first goal for Brighton, 1-0 away from home. This is what we want to see. Clean sheets and away wins as Webster heads just over from the corner. Unfortunately, Sander Berger not getting there. So at the moment, it stays just one. And we're back with just over 10 minutes to half time as Zakarian, who seems to be dropping a bit deep and becoming very influential in this game, gets it back into midfield and eventually to Webster. He finds Jacob Murder, the replacement today, up to Zakarian. Good run from him, releases Lamptey down the right. Walker Peters chasing him, it's back to Zakarian. So Lamptey again, into McAllister. Oh, everything's coming down that right. And I've got to say, 
with Trossard in poor form. Zakarian looks great as the playmaker, as does Pascal Gross when he's come in to be fair. But McAllister as that attack in mid looks absolutely relentless. But we've got another Salasu long throw. It's causing chaos again. Redmond flicks on. Veltman heads away. Bit worried Nathan Redmond's getting a free header to be honest. As Armstrong crosses, that's a good goal. Can't argue with that second cross. That is pinpoint from the Scott. Guedes heads in. 2-1. The deficit's been halved. And look at that for the stats as well. I didn't notice. Every shot on target's gone in. Two for us, one for Southampton. And at half time, it's 2-1. So don't think it's been a great game. Let's get through to the dressing room. See how we can go in this second half. Let's tell the lads you're doing all right. But I want you to step up to the next gear. Hopefully you can respond to that. And then loads of you can go off to the World Cup. So we're back with this long throw again. It has caused absolute chaos today, although that one was awful. Straight a Webster, the first man. He goes back to Lavakovic, and eventually it's led to the best chance of the game. I think it was offside, thankfully, when Teller played it through. But what on earth are we doing back there? That is hopeless. Goal disallowed. It stays 2 1. That is a proper let off, but looks like we're having a thriller in this second half, and it doesn't look like we're going to win it easy. See, Leeds are 4-2 up on Newcastle, City and Liverpool one apiece. It looks like there's goals galore today. Final Premier League match and they're leaving the fans with something to enjoy ahead of the World Cup as Dunk gives it to Veltman. Back to Lavakovic. God, we nearly give it away again. It's a few too many risks for my liking here as Veltman goes back to the goalkeeper. Long downfield. Addy Amy's up, won't get there. Livramento wins it. Salasu at the back, into Livramento again. And back to Jan Bednarek. He carries it forward to Armstrong. We're going to have to look at changes here. As Teller gives it to Livramento again. Surges forward. No one goes with him. And he's forced wide to Teller. They've doubled up on that wide area. And Kukurea struggling. Probably because we commit him to attack most of the time. As it's back to Teller again. Into Larin. 2-2. Two -two. I'm going to have to drop Kukurea back. We'll go to a support duty. We've got no one else on the bench. So hopefully we can get a response out of it. And we're back almost straight from the kickoff as well, which doesn't look good. Lamptey picking the ball up for Veltman. We could switch Lamptey over and put Kelvin in on the right. As McAllister chases forward, he's not going to get there. Liverpool take the lead at City. Looks like they're going to win the lead. And to be fair, Haaland is scoring at the same rate in this save as he is in real life. As Berger gets it to Kukurea and Webster. Back to Jack of Murder. Into Zakarian. Can he turn and find an attack? We've not really threatened for the last half an hour. It's up to Adeyemi, who turns on to his left. Good ball to Zakarian. Across to McAllister. Oh, it was a carbon copy chance for him. And on a hat trick, he's put it straight at a keeper. Oh, that's disappointing. Long ball forwards flicked on. This is end to end. It's a ridiculous second half. To the byline on the left. Cross towards Guedes. Hits the woodwork. I don't know what Veltman's doing. Just because we've got it on play out from the back does not mean you should be doing back passes from three yards. Addy Amy's flagged offside. We can finally breathe. And I think we're going to make some changes. I'm looking at the wing backs. I'm looking at Sander Berger. I'm going to take off Lamptey for Kelvin. I don't know what to do in midfield. If we'd had everyone fit, I would have put Murder left wing back. But as it is, I'm going to leave Kukurea. I'm going to put Sander Berger off for Pascal Gross. And we'll swap him with Murder. So we've got the set piece routine set up. I'll leave the last sub-10 more in case of injury or in case of rolling the dice. We'll confirm that at 2-2 and hopefully they make a difference. What's ironic about this game is we could probably do with the man Southampton have just taken off in Steven Alzate because he was that option to play on the wing-back area. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here with 10 minutes to go and this is ballsy. I'm going to put Murder at left wing-back for Kukurea who needs to come off. I'm going to put Zakarian in as the deep line playmaker. And I'm going to put on Adam Hlozek alongside Alexis McAllister. Let's see how we go with two strikers on the pitch. We've got 10 to go. Can we nick a winner or can we at least hold on for a point? Well, into three minutes of stoppage time. It doesn't look like we're getting anything, does it? Although, corner for grass into Webster. Oh, it's just wide. It's a glorious chance. It must be the final one. And in a game where we've disappointed defensively, we should have still nicked three points there. Dunk plays into Gross and Adi Amy. This must be the last chance. McAllister bought down. That's filthy. I mean, seriously, how cynical can you get? Yellow cards, and it's a last chance to whip the ball in the box. McAllister has it. We've got big men up. Who's going to deliver the decisive moment? It's short to Veltman. Why did you do that? McAllister, don't go backwards. Oh, you idiot. 
You absolute idiots. Just put the ball in the box. It's the last kick of the game. They hold on. We finished the stronger. And we should have won the match. Defensively, we let ourselves down a bit today. But it's 2-2. And we go into the World Cup without a defeat. That's the main thing. Let's get through the dressing room. See when we're going to be back. And where it leaves us in the Premier League table. Well, there we are. That result still leaves us in fifth with everyone having played 15 games. But to be honest, it's getting tight below. All the way down to Spurs on 20 points who have just sat Conte and we're trying to sign his brother as a coach now, I think. But the rest of it, it could be very, very tight. We'll wait and see how that pans out. But if we have a look at the schedule, we are going to come back after the World Cup, not for the first games. We are going to come back for the Carabao Cup quarter final away at Liverpool and a Premier League game at home to City. If for any reason we get a massive FA Cup draw, we'll show that as well, as of course we are defending a crown there. But they're the two I'm planning to show. If you're looking forward to it, as well as some January transfer news, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content until the end of the season from this one. And then it's all about the beta. You can find links to my plans for the new game and loads of save ideas for you guys up in the eye above. There's also a link to the Twitch channel up there too. We'll have daily streams throughout the beta period. And then down in the description, ways to support the channel and links to other platforms too. But above my head now are my FM23 plans. Please do check them out if you haven't already. And thank you very much for coming along as always. We'll be back next time after the World Cup.